Good evening, Raiders, and welcome to the 2020 Reynolds Bright Football Virtual Banquet. My name is Kelly Jackson Mulboy, and I'm the current president of the, of the Reynolds Bright Football Parent Association, also known as RFPA. I would like to say a big thank you to all parents, grandparents, cousins, nieces, nephews, everybody who had some type of contribution to us getting through this season, whether it was bringing extra kids to practice or taking extra kids home, bringing food, helping in the booster barn, working basketball games, um, any fundraising, just thank you guys a million times over. Because of you, this season definitely was a success. Um, I definitely have to shout out Raider Nutrition, uh, Mr. Seasick, and a piece of Chicago for all of your donations and contributions to us this season. We definitely would not have been able to feed the boys had you not had our back during the whole season. So thank you guys so much for your support and contributions. Um, I'm definitely a firm believer into giving people their flowers while they're alive. <clears throat> so I definitely have to say a huge thank you to the board, Kena, Kelly, Desiree, Stephanie and Antonio, please forgive me. I have this call. You guys, thank you so, so much for all the late nights, the early mornings, the changing of the schedules, the flexibility. Just thank you for everything that you guys did for this program and for these coaches and players this season. I truly, truly, truly do appreciate each and every one of you. Um, to my parents, um, if you would like to get involved in RFA, if you have any fundraising ideas, if you um, have more insight on recruiting or just if you have just any ideas that could definitely help us take our program to the next level, please feel free to reach out to us at RunnelsburgFootball at gmail.com or you can go to our website RunnelsburgFootball.com and leave a note. Um, or a message. We're also on Facebook um, at Reynoldsburg Football Parent Association. So please reach out to us. We're definitely looking to expand the board. We love for we would love for parents to be able to get out. And um, I did want to mention that we were able not only able to feed the high school players, but we were able to get snacks for the junior high school um, teams for those players and coaches for their entire season as well. So trust and believe all of the hard work that everybody put into the season, raising money, donations, it it truly helped us get through. Um, we definitely have to start preparing for next season. So again, if you're interested, please, please, please reach out to us um, and give us your email and contact information and somebody will be in contact with you very soon. <clears throat> I definitely want to say a huge thank you to um, to Coach Brickner, Coach Buddy White, and to Jack Pertell. Um, I came in here fresh and new, not having a clue what I was getting involved into. You guys heard and listened and were definitely open to a lot of ideas that um, I present to you guys. And for that, I am forever grateful. Um, and I'm happy and excited to, you know, to continue to work with you gentlemen another year. Um, so next... Now that I got all that out the way, next uh, we're going to show some highlights and pictures from the season. Delay the night or another day.
comes loose, recovered by Reynoldsburg. really hard um, out on that field from the film and the pictures that were just presented to us. Now I have the honor of introducing um, 
this young man who's been here for 10 years, who definitely came in and was able to turn the program around. So I present to you the one and the only, the myth and the legend, Coach Buddy White. Good afternoon. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to uh, our virtual banquet. Uh, it's totally different than anything that we've ever done before. Uh, the one thing that we learned this year is that we have to adjust to change. We dealt with change from the way that we prepared uh, preseason with the shutdowns, um, the way that we had to, uh, the way we're doing our banquets, everything was totally different this year. And uh, I am just so proud of, of the fact that we made it through the season. Uh, and the way that we made it through the season came down to our players being very diligent about making sure that they wore their mask, social distancing, taking temperatures, everything. Uh, I never thought that we'd be able to make it through the season, uh, but more importantly is what our players did away from here. They obviously practice uh, the proper things to do because you, you don't come here and get COVID, you bring COVID. And fortunately, once the season started, no one brought it here. And, uh, and I'm so happy because I can truly say that I really didn't expect us to finish the season. Obviously, last season was a serious roller coaster ride, you know, more so than I've ever experienced. You know, we beat Gahanna and then we lose to Groveport. You know, then we beat Newark, then we lose to Lancaster. And then we beat Central Crossing, then we lose to Pig Central. And then we beat Lancaster and we lost to Bradley. I've never experienced that before. Uh, it, it, I'm going to tell you what, though, I really had a lot of fun this year. Uh, we were introducing a lot of new players, guys that have never played varsity football before, and to watch those kids grow uh, was very, very commendable. I think our coaches did an exceptional job of preparing our kids, and the kids did an exceptional job of being coached, listening, uh, learning how important it is to uh, uh, to adjust to the details that they had to adjust to. Think we were asking to do things they've never done before, and uh, they responded well. We were a really good team at the end of the year, and uh, a lot of that goes to the players and the coaches and how we came together uh, to make sure that uh, we were able to do the things that we need to do to have a successful season. Um, the one thing that I definitely want to make sure that I apologize to, especially our young players about, is uh, the things that you had to experience after the Hillier Bradley game. Uh, the abusive language that you heard. We had uh, unauthorized people in our locker rooms looking for confrontations. Just a lot of things that happened that does not represent Raider Nation. What made it most embarrassing to me is whenever I had a chance to talk to the Hillier Bradley coach and he got feedback from their fans. They heard everything. He was telling me that they were so happy that they did not have to come through the Reynoldsburg side to go to their cars because that's how bad it was and how intimidating that was. I apologize to him. I apologize to the Bradley people. And I trust me, this is something that uh, the school administration is well aware of. They, many of the administrators were there and saw it happening. And we will have a, uh, something in place next year where our young kids will never have to experience anything like that again. Um, you know, so I, I want to apologize because when you guys are under my watch, it's my job to protect you. I didn't protect you from uh, that kind of abuse. I heard about a lot of the things that happened with the freshman team. I apologize to you young players too. We are well aware of what happened. We will address it and we'll make sure that you guys never have to experience uh, the kind of stuff that you guys experienced last season. It's enough said about that. Next season, we, uh, we, we have put together the most ambitious schedule that we've ever put together uh, for our team. We open the season next year at Upper Arlington, and then we have Huber Heights, Wayne at home. Uh, and if that game doesn't happen, we will have a very comparable team that will be in their place. But as of right now, we're still, we're still with Huber Heights. Then we go to Masson, Washington to play in Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. Uh, 20,000 people there 
uh, to witness, you know, the way that we're going to play football, and uh, I'm really, really excited about that. And then we go to Gehanna, and uh, you know that they have not forgotten the way that we beat them this year. So they're definitely going to be ready for us. They're going to be fired up for us, and we will accept the challenge. Uh, then Olentangy comes here. They're a perennial playoff team, well coached, and uh, they're, they're, they're going to bring their A game to us, and we're going to have our A game. So uh, then we get into league play, and our first league game is Groveport. We remember what Groveport did and we will respond accordingly. I'm sure that our guys will step up to the challenge uh, for that game. Then we get into league play. Uh, since we have such an ambitious schedule, I like to have a very ambitious goal. I would love for our team for next year. I'm talking about winning a regional championship. We got to get through Pick Central to do it, and we will. If we are very diligent, and if we are very dedicated during this off season to prepare our minds and bodies to get them to where it needs to be to compete with them. They are separating from us for one main reason, especially last year. We had to shut down our get big period. Our get big period is from January to June. We did not have our big get, get big period. When we came back in June, the only thing that we had to, we had to focus on was getting in shape. And so we didn't have our big get big period. Uh, and, uh, and it showed. We played a lot of young guys, a lot of guys that never had the opportunity to get big, and, but they were out there scrapping and battling, and I'm very proud of those guys. But if we want to take it to the next level, we have got to make sure uh, that we uh, have a great, great off-season program. Uh, one of the things that we want to change up, especially due to the COVID situation, you guys realize that after school, uh, you know, you got the football team down here, you got the track team down here, you got the soft, softball team, and then the baseball team. There could be two to 300 kids in our field house at one time. Well, what we want to do this year, uh, we want, and I've pretty well done my research on it. I've talked to coaches of the most successful teams here in Central Ohio. And each and every one of those teams that I talk to, they work out at 6 o'clock in the morning. And their kids are very committed to it. They're very dedicated to it. They don't have no excuses. The only excuse that they have is they didn't feel like getting out of bed. Okay? If we're going to do the things that we're going to do, we need to do the things that the championship teams are doing. They have no interruptions when they come in in the mornings. And we're coming in, and uh, we're going to get a great, great workout during the get big period. Our get big period is from January to June. That's where we're focused on getting big, getting as strong as we possibly can. We we'll worry about, uh, you know, cardio and all that kind of stuff. We we'll worry about that come June. But if we're going to take on the big boys, we better start looking like the big boys. And next year, uh, we are working on our off-season program to make sure that we are ready for the big boys. Now, the only thing that I'm really concerned about is with the spread of COVID increasing. Uh, are they going to shut down the facilities here? I'm not sure. I'm hoping that they don't, uh, especially if we, can, if we can come in at 6 o'clock in the morning and spend an hour to get, uh, you know, to get a really good workout in. And if we're real diligent upon the protocols that we use, uh, uh, I'm hoping that we can get through it. But we, we cannot, we, we have definitely... Uh, we definitely have to get our bodies and our minds in the type of condition it's going to take to win a championship. Uh, we got enough guys coming back. Guys know what it's like to play on Friday nights varsity football. And, uh, you know, so now it's all about getting our bodies right. And uh, I'm very, very concerned about that. I'm, I've been uh, doing a lot of research. I've talked to Coach Noah. Uh, and uh, he's very committed also to make sure that he gets us as big as we possibly can. Okay, we'll talk more about the off-season workouts uh, 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 as we go along in the future, but uh, my goal is to take the time after Thanksgiving to start doing it then and uh, up until Christmas. That way we're going to find out we can do some trial and error if we need to tweak some things, we can tweak it uh, when we start the uh, program again in January so we can make sure that we get it right. 
what I'm hoping most about is that we don't have any interruption. And when you get up at 6 in the morning, you're going to find out who's committed to the championship and who is going to try to take the easy way there. And uh, there's no easy way to win a championship. Uh, we've got to be committed and we've got to get after it. Okay, we'll talk more about workouts at a later date, uh, but I will keep you informed on that. As far as recruiting is concerned, I hope you realize that, uh, you know, the recruiters haven't been around because they're not allowed to be on the road until January 1st. Okay, I've heard from recruiters. We've been sending out profiles to different recruiters. Uh, the thing that makes it most difficult uh, for me and the coaches is that once they have your information, we don't normally hear from them again, you know, and if you guys don't tell us what's going on, we don't know, okay, so uh, one of the things I'm going to do is, I'm, especially I'm going to start off with the seniors, reaching out to the seniors, finding out what's going on, who do I need to talk to, who do we need to send information to, hopefully if you're, if you're serious about wanting to go to school, that you get your grades in line, and that you have your highlight tapes together. Uh, and so, uh, you know, so when the recruiters start really getting into the recruiting, then uh, uh, we want to make sure that all your information is in front of them uh, so that they have a, uh, a good opportunity to vet you and find out if you're somebody that, that fits their program. One of the things that hurts us more than anything else is the fact that we work really hard on getting our kids into school. Unfortunately, uh, the kids will go, and then after their freshman year, they, you know, I see them walking around in Reynoldsburg talking about, nah, I didn't want to go back, it didn't work out, and all that. Well, guess what? A lot of those colleges that came after those kids, they're not coming back to Reynoldsburg, you know, because the word now is, you know, before it used to be Reynoldsburg had good players, but they didn't have grades. Well, now the word is, yo, know, they got good players, they got grades, but they don't stay. And that's a heck of a reputation to have. Uh, you know, a couple years ago, we sent 16 kids to college. Only six of them are still there. We've got to do something about that. So I challenge you seniors, if you are, do get the opportunity to go to a college to complete your football career, uh, please stay. Give it a chance. You know, the most important thing you got to realize, you're going there to get an education. You're using football to get you an education. Okay? Because you're going to find that most good jobs that you're going to be going after, you're going to be going up against somebody with a college education, okay? And you have got to make yourself as marketable as possible, and we're going to do what we can to get you into college, but after that, you know, you, you got to make it work. But I wanted to make sure that you knew by when you quit, how it affects our lower grades as they're coming up and the recruiters are coming here, uh, you know, some recruiters quit recruiting Reynoldsburg because of the bad experience that they've had from some of our kids that uh, chose to quit, you know, whenever it was, uh, you know, whenever they were really counting on them. They spent a lot of time and a lot of money to recruit our kids, and then they go there for one season and quit. You know, that's not good. And it hurts, and it hurts our lower grades. And so I challenge our seniors this year you go to college, you got to give it a chance. You got to give it a chance. You got to get through your freshman year first, which is the most difficult year. I know you guys. I know how disciplined, I know how dedicated, and how much you love football. If the opportunity is there, give it a chance. But most importantly, understand why you're there. Use football to get you an education, okay? Because that is what is going to make you marketable. It was so great uh, last week. Uh, watching a number of our kids who graduated from here playing for the MAC schools, actually seeing them out there on the field, you know, made me feel like a proud papa, you know, watching those kids play, the kids we have down at Ohio University, uh, you know, the kids that we have that out, uh, we have a kid playing for uh, uh, Kent State University, Ball State University, uh, Eastern Michigan, Bowling Green, and I kept flicking through the channels, you know, because all those games were on. And sometimes I would miss them because I'm looking at another channel. But, uh, but it, it, it's a sense of pride whenever you hear one of your players' names being called and they say from Reynoldsburg, Ohio. Uh, that's what it's all about.
And so let's make sure that, you know, we're going to put the effort in to get you recruited. Uh, I need to con I need to talk to you so I know where you are with the recruiting. If you're not hearing anything, then we need to get things going because we've already, most likely, already sent your profiles to them and uh, your highlight tapes, okay? If you're not hearing from them, maybe we need to look at some other schools. But we're going to do all we can to help you, and we just ask you to help the program by... If they do accept you, if they bring you in, represent us well. Reynoldsburg is not a team of quitters, and let's not uh, betray that type of, uh, uh, of attitude when we go to these other schools, okay? Um, at this time, I'm gonna turn it back over to uh, the moderator, and then we will get into uh, uh, giving out the awards. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, my name is Kelly Crawford and I am currently serving as a board member on the Reynoldsburg Football Parent Association. And I have the honor and privilege of introducing this year's keynote speaker. He is an amazing man. He's a brave, fearless, determined, proud father and hero, not only to our country, but to his three daughters. He is a combat veteran, having served in the United States Army from 2000 to 2004, and is currently a senior logistician in the federal government. Now, this is where our boys really need to tune in. He attained a Bachelor of Science in Management and Logistics, earning a 3.892 GPA, graduating magna cum laude. He received a master's in business administration, earning a 3.91 GPA. Notice how I had to say each number specifically. Yes, he is a member of Mu Chi chapter of Delta Mu Delta International Honor Society in Business. His academic accomplishments speaks volumes that hard work and determination truly does pay off. He has a passion for touching others with his eloquent expression through inspirational speaking and spoken word poetry with Spit Enterprises and is the founder of I Rock Ministry. So from your kitchen tables, living rooms, bedrooms, please give our guest a massive round of applause and salute. Please welcome Mr. Rodney Harmon. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. First of all, thank you for the introduction. Thank you to Kelly, who invited me to speak to you guys. Thank you to all the um, um, senior administrators and coaching staff. That, that, that has me here today. It's truly a pleasure to speak to you. Um, <clears throat> when I was first asked to speak, I really wasn't sure what angle to come from. If I'm being honest with you, I don't really see myself as qualified to get up here and talk to you. Um, uh, that, was a, that was a very beautiful <laughs> way of stating my accolades, but I, that's not really the way I really env envision myself. I'm kind of what you see here, just a t-shirt wearing laid back individual. This is my basement where I spend the vast, vast, vast majority of my time. So life is pretty simple to me. Um, but I realized that's kind of a virtue of mine. You know, if I do pat myself on the back or anything, it's that I appreciate simplicity and am able to be in touch with simplicity, learn something from simplicity and apply it to this complicated world. That's kind of what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about strategic planning, strat planning, just to put it simply. So I want to speak to you a little bit about strat planning. Um, I, 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 the basis for what I want to talk about comes from a passage of scripture. No, I won't preach to you. I won't preach to you. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to, but I'm not, but I'm not, I'm not. But the passage of scripture is from Proverbs, which contains a great deal of wisdom, 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 wisdom. Uh, much of which is simply stated. But when you take these simple truths, these simple wisdoms and apply to this complicated existence that we call life, oh, you'd be 
blown away with what you can make from it. It's beautiful. I tell you it is. It's beautiful. Uh, so I'll just jump right into it. I'll just jump right into it. Proverbs 28, 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. I'm going to read that one more time. When there is no vision, the people perish. The B clause in the scripture says, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. But there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. What exactly is this saying? Let's, 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 let's pluck it from the spiritual and apply this to our everyday. Where there is no vision, no revelation of what should be done, no understanding of what you're trying to accomplish. People perish, meaning they wander, they squander. But he that keeps the law, meaning he who keeps to a plan, that plan that was revealed from the vision, happy, meaning contented, excuse me, contented, uh, uh, um, um, jovial, rested, content is he. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law happy is he. So, a universal application, in my own words. In essence, a successful endeavor is predicated upon one's revelation of what should be done and strict adherence to a well-defined action plan for manifestation. Dig this now, listen. In essence... A successful endeavor is predicated upon what, excuse me, is predicated upon one's revelation of what should be done and strict adherence to a well-defined action plan for manifestation. Perhaps you're like, Rodney, what does that mean? What does that mean? What, is, what does that look like? All right, let's, okay, let's illustrate this. Speaking to a football team. So let's speak to a football team success. What you would consider a successful endeavor might be winning a game, right or wrong. Uh, uh, and if you do that successfully over your 10 games, 16 games, whatever, whatever, how many game season, the championship is in your sights, win that game, successful endeavor. So, so, so a successful endeavor, game by game, season by season, for, for, for a football team, looks like a, 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 all parties involved, all parties being the coaching staff, the players, being on, being on one accord, having the same vision, that being winning, winning. Right? A championship. If you're not in it to win it, what are you in it for? Right? Okay. So so, so for a football team to have success, all parties must envision what success looks like. And then the coaching, coaching staff devises a plan. The players carry out said plan. And all parties remain unified and encouraged. When that plan is put to the test, we just watch... My, uh, Mike Tyson fight, right? Last night. I don't know if you watched the fight. You a Tyson fan or not? I am. I was born in the 80s. So, so, so Tyson was one of my heroes. I remember him saying one time that, that, that everyone has a plan until they're punched in the face. Everyone has a plan until they're punched in the face. But listen, 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 listen. When, when, when you have a sure plan and you're committed to that plan, that plan can stand being punched in the face. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't lose heart. You're able to course correct and get back to said plan, execute said plan until it's successful. So again, all parties remain unified, encouraged, and given to course correction as the game or season progresses. All right, so let's flip that. The inverse would be a football team's peril, right? All right, so we spoke of a football team's success. What does their peril look like? For lack of vision, right? So... All parties want to win a championship. Notice I said they want to win. I didn't say anything about envisioning. I said they want to win. They have a desire. It's, 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 kind of, it's, it's kind of fickle. It's almost like when I ask my wife, you hungry, baby? She's like, yeah, I can eat. No, no, no. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? No. I, 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 I want to win. I need to win. There's a different type of different type of, uh, of, uh, of a sentiment that comes with that. Or do, can you just eat or are you hungry? Are you hungry? progress are you hungry for something so all parties want to win a championship feels good right i've seen them seen them with the victory parade that's, that looks good i want that too i just want that it's loosely it's loose though but the coaching staff they have no vision or plan for success players do their own thing on the field 
11 players on offense, 11 players on defense. They just kind of do their own thing. The linemen think they're a quarterback. The, 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 the wide receiver wants to be a running back. You know, they, 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 they have their own, they, they, they have their own uh, get down. They're not unified. They're not unified. So, so they do their own thing on the field. And then when the going, going gets tough, jokers get going, right? Jokers get going. Running back, running back, comes through the hole, blah, gets cleaned up. You know what he does? He picks up his ball and he goes home because the going got tough. Because the going got tough. He's no longer in it. Do you, do you get what I'm trying to say? If you don't envision success, truly envision success, see it, it becomes real to you. And then you put a plan in place to, 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 to actualize that success, to manifest that success. You'll end up perishing. But there's no vision, people perish. But he who keeps the law sticks to the script, sticks to the plan, happy, contented, well off is he. Well off is he. So my interrogative for you today is this. What is your plan for the future? I'm talking to some seniors. I'm talking to some juniors. Talking to some sophomores and freshmen. Doesn't matter which one you are. What is your plan for success? I have three daughters. Two in college, one a freshman in high school. I talk to them all the time about strap planning. What is your plan? What are you trying to accomplish? You need to be thinking on these things, chewing on these things, developing these thoughts. Because now is the time. Oh, now is the time. Now is the time. So what is your plan for success? Understand that, that, that in life, you're the play caller. You're the play caller. You're the coach, if you will. And you, and you are one of each 11 players on the field. Maybe, maybe, maybe one of each 11 players is a, is a different aspect of who you are. You as an artist, you as a person, you as an employee, you as a visionary, you as an entrepreneur, you as a boyfriend, you as a big brother, little brother. Do you understand that all aspects and facets of who you are must work together in concert, similar to that of 11 players on the football field? What if, what if, what if the play is going to this side of the field, but everyone goes to that side of the field? All players, all players have to be on the same page. The linemen, the linemen, they're, 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 they're going to catch the ball. They won't, they won't touch the ball, receive the ball. They probably won't even see the, the, the successful uh, completion of the play. If it goes according to plan, right? But their role is to maintain that block, maintain that block. If they, if, they, if they get off that block and want to see what's going on downfield, what can happen with the assignment that they're called to? That's what I mean about every aspect of yourself, the entirety of you, every, 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 every hat you wear. You work, pull, pull it all together, working in concert to render your play, your, 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 your game what you're trying to achieve, to render it successful. That's what needs to happen. That's what needs to happen. So what is your plan? What play are you calling? High school, it's gonna breeze by. I graduated in 2000, 20 years ago. I swear to you guys, I could just think about last time, but Joker, talk to me like this here. I remember it like yesterday. I was sitting in your shoe, but I was a football player. Can you tell by the... Nah, nah, nah. Listen, I was a football player too. So, so, so I know what you might be thinking and feeling right now because I was quite literally sitting in your shoes. I'm gonna get to my, I'm gonna get to my testimony, my experience toward the end of my discourse, but I move on for the moment. So now that we've established, hey, all right, all right, right, you, you, you're saying that we need to devise a plan for the future, right? Without, you know, devoid of a plan, uh, a, a vision, people perish. So I need to keep keep to a law, keep to a script, have an internal uh, moral code, a, po a constitution, if you will, something that guides the way I get down. All right. So so what do I do with that? All that is all that. That's kind of a macro. That's, that's kind of macro guidance. That's kind of a macro sentiment. What can I what can I do when it comes to micro execution? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. I want to introduce to you 
the concept of a SWOT analysis. Some of you heard of it, it's, it's, and, and some of you haven't, but a SWOT analysis. SWOT is an acronym, S-W-O-T. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It is incumbent upon you to, to, to sit within yourself. Get vulnerable, you know, get vulnerable for a second. Get real. Who am I? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What opportunities are at my disposal and what threats are lingering that oppose my success? A SWOT analysis. This was taught to me in business school. Kind of the entirety of business school is a SWOT analysis. Uh, uh, anyone who's had a day of business school fully understands what I'm talking about. I remember learning this concept in school. I remember learning this concept when I was in the army and, 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 and it kind of loosely talked to me through my parents, maybe not given to me in these terms, but 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 the, just the idea of a SWOT analysis has been taught to me seemingly on numerous occasions. But I remember sitting in business school, learning this, and I thought to myself, like, wow, yo, this is so many other concepts that I learned. If a person were to behold these concepts, I mean, I mean, really, really, really say to themselves, I'm gonna execute in this manner, how successful would they be? Again. Business school taught me how to manage a company, how to massage uh, 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 what goes on, inner workings and day-to-day -day dealings in a company. Uh, people, personnel, the product, devise a plan, execute it for success, right? So that's the essence of business school in this short blurb. But a SWOT analysis is so incumbent upon any business leader, but it's incumbent upon you. Every person needs to sit within themselves, engage what their strengths Weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are. So, as it pertains to your strengths, what are you, what are you good at? What are you passionate about? What can you do just to do? You know, kind of, kind of, as they say, what would you do for free? What, what, what moves you? What moves you? What moves you? Those. Things are among your strengths. What can you contribute? What can you offer? These are your strengths. These are your strengths. These are your strengths. Concerning weaknesses, it's kind of the inverse. I like the SWOT analysis because the strengths are 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 are, are given are given. You know, before you get too high in yourself, analyzing all your strengths, you gotta give consideration to your weaknesses. So, what are your weaknesses? What are you not so good at? What are you not so passionate about? What is it, what, 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 what is challenging to you? What, what sucks the wind out of yourselves? As it pertains to your weaknesses, though, many people will say, hey, learn your weaknesses and, 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 and focus on them. Hmm, not so much, not so much. You really want to play to your strengths. Bring your weaknesses up to a point of proficiency to where, to where, to where, to where you're not so vulnerable, because we'll talk about the threats in a second. Bring your weaknesses up to a point of proficiency or competency to where you can kind of move and navigate throughout. But, but, but your strengths is where you give keen consideration to. So give keen consideration to your strengths, but don't lose sight of what your weaknesses are. Understand who you are. Know yourself comprehensively. Opportunities. So based upon your strengths and your weaknesses, now what are my opportunities? I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm passionate about. I know what I'm not so good at, not so passionate about. So based upon this, what opportunities am I left with? What, what can I do with me? With me, me as a product, right? Me as, me as, me as a person. Where can I, where can I, where can I employ my skills or where, can, or where can my skills be employed? What are my opportunities? And then again, before you get too high, looking at your opportunities, what are the threats? What are the threats? What is out there opposing your opportunities? What is the opposition to your opportunities? Or in the business world, who is your competition? Who is your competition? You have to understand who your competition is. You can't be so, so tied in, so glued in to, 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 to your plan that you don't give consideration to what's going on. So it's clear to see just how important a SWOT analysis is to to, to again, a business or a person, to a business or a person. <laughs> kind of the, kind of the, 
kind of the uh, the uh, the uh, <laughs> what you look like without a SWOT analysis. You ever you ever seen someone walking about and a and a fly comes their way and they're swatting like so and they look crazy, don't they? Right from a distance, you you can't see the fly. All you see is them swatting at the air. This is how you'll go through life. This is this is this is this is what you'll appear to be just swatting at the air without a SWOT analysis. Guys, what I'm trying to say to you is it's it's I kind of I kind of tried to make a little pun there or joke there, but hear me. What I'm saying to you is that you flounder without this. You flounder without this 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 deep dive into your own psyche. This deep dive into your own self. This deep dive into considering where you're going. Again, what you're ultimately trying to achieve. SWOT analysis, guys. SWOT analysis. Because again, like I said, from a distance, you look like you're just swatting at the air. Floundering. Devoid of a vision. Devoid of a plan. People perish. Devoid of a vision. Devoid of a plan. People perish. You're in high school. A few of you might be at the very, very end of it. Graduating this year, about to leap into the springboard that we call life and, 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 and swim with the big fishes. I want to encourage you that you will do well, that you will be well. But your wellness is, 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 is predicated upon your action or inaction. It's predicated, it's predicated upon your action or inaction. It is important right now to give consideration to what your plan is. I told you I would conclude with a little bit of my story, right? So let me jump right into that. I told you I was a football player. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Don't get me wrong. I, I won't, I won't, I won't take this time to 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 boast like I was a Ohio State good. But I was pretty good. I was pretty good. I I felt rather confident that my football abilities would take me to the next level. But do you understand? To me, at that time, seventeen year old Rodney, sixteen year old Rodney, foot my my my. My getting to the next level was all about how strong I was. If I could push, I was a lineman. If I could push you down, then I've done my job and that's that. That was football to me. That was, that was how I gauged success, my performance in the field. But like I said to you before, there are so many other aspects of Rodney that Rodney wasn't tuned in on. Rodney wasn't tuned in on. So, so in the probably, probably if you're giving consideration to a, to, uh, to uh, leading, right? Probably your critical skills and your soft skills. My soft skills were lacking. Crit critically speaking, football field, pretty good. Soft skills lacking. So because I didn't pull every area of my life together and focus it on being the best football player that I could be, I, I began to spiral. I was on I was on I was on a road that would end with me perishing. So coming out of high school, I had a baby. Baby on the way. It's like, oh my God, what am I doing? All of a sudden, football became a game. Football became a game. Quite literally a game, like 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 checkers or chess or or, or Monopoly or Connect Four. It was no longer what was gonna be the vehicle to get me from, from the hood to college. And beyond. It, it was a game. Because it got real. Life got real. I had a baby coming. What am I going to do with that? At 17, I devised a plan. I devised a plan. I decided to sum it up quickly. I'm going to join the army. I'm going to seek to, 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 to work within the realm of logistics because there's a logistics company, the Defense Logistics Agency, that I live just adjacent to, right up here on Broad Street. So maybe I could spend some time in the service, learn a trade, get out, work in civil service for the government, take that money that I could have or would have, perhaps or whatever, would have had as a, in a scholarship, earn a GI Bill, go to college that way. Wow, 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 setting myself up to have some resources, something to put in this little child's mouth was a man about mine. I was, oh, I was determined to be a man about mine. So I, so as a child, I made a plan that guys I'm walking in right now, 
the manifestation of that plan. I'm walking in right now. I'm walking in right now. As that 17 year old boy, I swore in. I joined the United States Army. By August, in the, the end of the summer of my senior year, I went off to, to the military. With the basic training in Fort Benning, a year or so later, spent a year in combat. I spent the majority of my time in the army over in Germany. I'm back here right now. Fast forward, I have a successful career in the federal government. I went to college, made good, made good. And, and, and that baby, that sparked this motivation. She later, now she has two sisters and they are my world. They are my world. They're my world. They're the reason I continue to strap plan today. They're the reason I continue to, to, to fine tune my SWOT analysis. The SWOT analysis for me personally, the SWOT analysis for my career, the SWOT analysis for how I'm gonna lead my family and where I'm leading my family. Why, I, why I'm committed to strap planning today is because of them. They're my everything. They're my everything. But guys, I was on a downward spiral. I was on a downward spiral. I didn't know what I would do. I, didn't, I don't come from any riches. I'm not rich today. But I devised a plan that prevented my perishing. Where there is no plan, people perish. But he that keeps the law, devises a plan, sticks to a script, happy, well off, contented, prosperous, successful, is he. Gentlemen, I want you to have success beyond the football field. In every aspect of your life. In every aspect of your life. Every aspect of your life. You need to huddle up. Huddle up with your core group. Or really huddle up within yourself. Who you are today. What you idealize for tomorrow. And devise a step. Steps. To get you from here to there. And when it's time to execute that play, you come out that hole, huddle, and you bang it out. All right? Thank you for having me. It's been my pleasure speaking to you. Hopefully something I said has been impactful. God bless you. and friends for helping me become a better man and teammate all around. Uh, yeah, the go Raiders. First of all, I'd like to thank class of 2021 and my friends and my family for allowing me to experience the best four years of high school. The class below me, you guys stay motivated and always work hard. 2021, we did it. 11 out. To start off, I'd like to thank God for letting me get to this point in time and to the class of 2021. We've been through a lot to get to this point in our lives. Shout out to my coaches and my parents. Y'all made the man I am today. Class 2021, we out. I want to thank my coaches and parents for sticking with me through these four years. It's been a rough four years, but I'm glad I got to play my senior year. I'm blessed and Cinco out. I'd like to thank all my former and current teammates and coaches for allowing me to play the last four years, high school football at Williamsburg. 
I also like to give a special thanks to my friends and family for always motivating me to better myself on the field and off the field. It's been real, class 2021, big country out. I just want to thank my family and my team for supporting me and pushing me to my dream. And I want to say this is the best four years of my life, and I hope I continue this journey. Out. Hey, Mom and Dad, I'm thankful for everything you guys do for me. Coaches, you guys have been awesome. It's been a blessing to be here the last four years. And my teammates, it's been awesome being around all the energy. And class 2021, go Raiders. I want to give a shout out to my family and my teammates for always having my back and better me as a student athlete. And I want to give a shout out to the coaches and the Reynoldsburg program for allowing me to express my talent for all four years and 2021 for life. Go Raiders. I'd like to thank my family, my coaches, and my brothers for the short time I've been here. You guys support me and welcome me with open arms. Um, I'd like to thank my mother and my father for supporting me and being with me during this whole process. NMLB 1300, out. First, I want to thank my, uh, my teammates for having my back on and off the field. And second, I want to thank my mom for, make, for helping me become a better man today. And lastly, I want to thank my coaches for helping me get better and letting me play my senior year. I'm Coach Levon. I'm Coach Mickle. And we're going to talk about Dalton Hall. Uh, he was one of the captains, and this guy is a great leader, um, showed exactly what it's like to be an offensive, line, offensive lineman. Um, Dalton brought a lot to the table, and it was exciting to work with. Uh, he wanted to always get better and always wanted to learn. Um, executed very well, uh, especially in his last uh, year. Um, going off of that, he graded out a 97% in every game. So, and that's a tough thing to do, bringing the championship effort to the offensive line and for the team. You know, Dalton was a three-year starter. Uh, so his first year, sophomore year, he came in, uh, always been the biggest kid in his class, playing tackle, playing outside. Uh, but we moved him to center. Um, he had perfect snaps. You know, it's not often that a sophomore comes in and you can count on him for something as important as touching the ball every play. So, you know, we knew Dalton could handle it. Uh, up front, physically, you know, he wasn't the strongest kid at that point, uh, but he took coaching really well. He worked with leverage, he worked with his hands, and he got better every day. Um, you know, his sophomore year, we were really big, we were really good, we were really fast. And he went, to get, went up against kids in practice every day that were tough, stronger than him, tougher than him. And they were older kids. And he took it, and he got better every day. And, you know, it's, I think that sophomore year really built him to what he is now. Um, I was hard on him when he was a sophomore. I told him I was going to be hard on him, and he took it really well. Not a lot of kids can take coaching the way Dalton takes coaching. Um, Dalton doesn't take coaching personally. Dalton takes coaching because he knows we care about him. And sometimes, you know, you talk kind of loud on football, you know, you get emotional. And, you know, Dalton really tunes that out and he doesn't listen to, you know, your tone, he listens to what you say. And it's made him a great football player. You know, his sophomore year we went and we were in the regional semifinals, OCC champs, beat pick central, beat pick north. Um, and he was in the middle of our offensive line for all of that. I know at the beginning of that year, we scrimmaged Dalton Tangy Orange. Uh, we didn't have a backup center. Dalton took every rep. He took every JV rep, he took every varsity rep, he took every uh, second group rep. From the start of the scrimmage to the end of the scrimmage, the kid didn't come off the field. Um, and that's just a testament to what kind of kid he was when he was 15, 16 years old. Um, so we get through his sophomore year and he hits the off season hard. Um, he was ready to go, he wrestled, come out of wrestling, he's in good shape, you know, he starts lifting. And then Coach LeVon comes along uh, before his junior year. And Coach LeVon really brought a lot of technique, you know, that helped Dalton out a lot. Because Dalton didn't have a strong lower body. He's missing something on his lower body, would you say, Coach? Yeah, he's he a little something. A little you something. know, but, uh, but Coach LeVon stepped in, and he really helped out a lot. You want to talk a little bit about his junior year? His junior year, Dalton, uh, when I first came on the board in 2019, um, I looked at Dalton, and they told me he was a center. And I looked, like, uh, I don't think this guy is really a – center type body, we're going to move him out to the outside and I think that'll be the best thing for him and for the team. And one thing about uh, moving positions, especially from center to the outside, you're on an island. At a tackle, you are on an island. Everything's more spaced out and you're dealing with a lot more athletic guys. Rather than being in the middle, you're 
dealing with a lot of big people that can't move that well. So that's one thing as a really big challenge from going from center to uh, left tackle. And that's the money position, the second highest paid in the NFL. And you protect the quarterback's blind side and everything. And Dalton did an excellent job going into his junior year. And what really kicked off for him was Westville South. Um, and after that, it was just like every game, he just kept getting better and better and better. And to the point that, you know, you, I mean, it was less coaching that we had to do for him. And it showed that he was expected to do that. And Dalton always rises up to the challenge. And I'm talking about blocking the best player in, in high school football. And, you know, he held, held him to no sacks. I mean, that's, that's, that's amazing for a kid like that. And, you know, yeah. stuff like that goes unnoticed, but we notice it. And that was a big win for Dalton uh, going on from that. So he had the most confidence after that game is showing that he can block anybody, which he definitely did. Did you see a big jump from Dalton after that? No. Nope. You know, after he, he just, you know, we played them and that went the way it did. We didn't score in the red zone, but – Dalton played really well. You know, he was really upset after that. I remember that game. I was, you know, upset after that game. We all were because we had a chance to win, but we just couldn't. We couldn't score, and we were just – we kept shooting ourselves in the foot, and it was just something that we kept doing. And Dalton, you know, after the game was real upset, and I remember we talked to him, and we said, man, it's hard to do, but you got to look how well you played, you know, because up front we don't get a lot of uh, a lot of talking about, you know. We don't get stats. Our stats are our wins and losses. That's the only stats we have up front, except for the pancakes that we count um, for the kids. Um, so, you know, he he really took that confidence, and there wasn't a kid the rest of the year um, at his junior year that gave him troubles. And I, I think that really showed, really propelled him into this senior year where he became a leader. And picking off that, like going into this senior year, um, Dalton came back with vengeance, really, um, a chip on his shoulder that he wanted to be the best, the best that there is in Ohio and in the country. And I know he had all was capable of all the tools that he could be the best person for the job at an offensive line. And he just, it's, it's really hard to speak on because, I mean, if you watch the film, you'll see what I'm talking about. And it was a guy that he, he really, he stuck out. And at being an offense lineman that sticks out, it's, it's really amazing. I mean, everybody looks at, you know, the running back, quarterbacks, receiver. But, yeah. you know, the big guys up front, they really don't take notice. But when you see Dalton out there, you notice something. You see a difference maker. And he opened up a lot of holes for the running backs and the quarterback and protected them well. And one thing we always preach about, you protect the little guys. And he did that very, very well. Yeah. Um, it was great, that great time coaching him, like I said before. And it's, it just made our job easy for coaching Dalton. And, you know, and at the time, if we turn or, you know, coaching up somebody else, he's still, you know, learning, seeing what we say for them so he doesn't make the same mistake. And also helping us coach out, uh, coach the kids too. Yeah. So, which is very amazing when you have a guy like that in your corner. It makes your job easier and it makes the team better. Yeah. I mean, you have Dalton Senior here. It's not even, there's not too much to talk about because it was great. I mean, it was perfect. Everything we wanted him to do, he did. Uh, and like he's like LeVon said, watch the film. He's just putting kids down all the time. Um, he, if we needed something, we knew where to go. Um, and that's saying something. You know, we look, we play Pitt Central on TV, and that was a tough one for us. But I was getting text messages after the game from guys that played with in college and friends around Central Ohio just saying, man, 64, he's he's the real deal. Where, where's he going to school, you know? And and that I've never had that. I, we've had great linemen through here, and we've played on TV, but I never had somebody text me and say, that kid on the edge, you know, he's blocking everybody. You see how big that kid is from – that other school, and and he's not even he's not even pushing back. He, he's working. You know that's impressive. You know to get noticed like that by people that don't know football that well. <laughs> you know some of those people really didn't. And, and to stick out as a as a tackle in high school, it, it's really impressive. 
you know, Dalton is the leader. You know, he was the leader of the line. We told him he was going to be it. He decided to take it. He ran with it. Um, the kid's tough. He's a great kid. You know, he's got wrestling coming up in the in this the winter. You know, he's looking to get on the podium in the spring. Um, and I think he's got a shot to do it. He's a district qualifier last year. And I think as hard as he works, and if he truly wants it, then that's what he's going to get because he'll work for it, you know. And uh, really proud of him. And that's – I'm just proud of him. You got anything else? Uh, I wish you the best of luck on your future endures. And yeah. you if you ever need anything, hit us up. We got you anytime. Reference, anything, we got you, man. Yes, sir. Always. Good luck, Dalton. Hi. My name is Tim Adams. Defensive line coach here at uh, Reynoldsburg. First of all, I would like to give thanks to the RPA for giving me an opportunity to speak on the captains um, this year. This year, I'll be speaking on Makai Wilford. Uh, what can I say about Makai? Uh, Makai, one heck of a kid. Um, earlier in the year, when Coach and I were sitting around um, discussing who who you thought that would be a uh, who I thought that would be a great. Um, leader for this team, and immediately your name came up. Um, throughout the year, you exhibited exactly what a leader is supposed to be. Um, you're a wonderful kid, great kid. I enjoyed working with you. Um, the first time I met you over here at Reynolds Bird, I can tell that you had that quality to be a leadership, and I think that was uh, two years ago. Um, in the weight room, you were always challenged by yourself, showed by example. Uh, most of the kids followed around you. Uh, on the football field, um, you exhibited those extraordinary um, qualities that any kid um, should have if they're thinking about being a leader. Um, there's a few things that I wrote down that I think you exhibited um, to be a leader here at Reynoldsburg. And for you un incoming um, uh, younger guys, these are the things that I saw in Makai. Um, first of all, you had to have patience. Makai, you had patience all year long. Um, no matter what the adversity was, you came through when we needed you. Um, you was an active listener. Um, you were one of the kids or one of the young men that I really enjoyed working with and talking to individually. Um, when we went over film, you always had questions, um, and I always gave you feedback on those, and you always took those um, answers that I gave you and ran with it, pretty much. Um, being reliable. Um, being reliable is a strong character that uh, I can count on you, Makai. Makai really showed that he was a reliable type of person. Um, you asked him to be at a certain place at a certain time, he would be there. Um, that was an excellent job throughout the season, and I saw that earlier in your career when you first came, when I first came here and I first met you. Um, being dependable. You were definitely a dependable kid, or young man. I should stop saying kid, but young man. Uh, you were very dependable as far as being there when we needed you. Um, we gave you a specific time, gave you a duty, and we knew that that duty would be carried out um, throughout the season um, by you. Um, staying positive, no matter how bad things got, you were always positive. You always had that bright smile on your face, and I think the kids really enjoyed seeing you around with that smile on your face, and you really lifted the spirits of the kids when we were down. They always can count on you in that part. Um, being able to communicate is another attribute that you had. Um, if there was a problem on the field or there was a problem throughout the school or if there was a problem um, on, in the locker room, you always were able to come to us as a man and communicate those problems. Um, that's, that's a sign of a true leader. Um, being flexible. Being flexible in the time that we had here at Reynoldsburg, and I know this was a rough year, you were flexible with your schedule. Um, knowing that you're a senior this year and you were out working, but you were real flexible on your work schedule and you were here every day at practice, you never missed practice, and you was always on time with that. Um, being a risk taker, that's one thing that I can count on you. At some times, you would take that risk. That time when uh, you knew it was time to shine, uh, you would take that risk. Um, slipping inside tackles, making tackles, um, being that defensive end, being a small guy in stature, in a Division I um, program, that's one heck of a job you did for us out there in that football field, and the kids really enjoyed that, and I enjoyed that as a coach. Um, and the ability to teach and learn, being a mentor. Being a mentor to some of the young kids that are um, coming up behind you. Um, I think 
you did an excellent job of that. Um, as far as working on the field every time kids saw you, how you played, um, even in practice. There was times in practice I think I had to slow you down. One day in practice, uh, it was going to be a uh, memorable um, thing to me, and it may not be for you, is when we were doing those ring drills. And as fast as you were going through those drills, every drill you took serious. But the one time you took serious was in a hoop drill, and you about knocked yourself out. Um, but being all that said, um, that's what a leader does. He goes out on the limb, showing all those young guys what it takes to play in this league and being able to play Division I football. So um, to you, Makai, I'd like to thank you for your leadership and everything you exhibited here at Reynoldsburg. Um, you'll surely be missed, and I really appreciate coaching you as a, um, as a student of the game and a great football player. Thank you. Hi, my name is Aaron Luke. I'm the quarterback's coach here at Reynoldsburg, and I have the esteemed honor of kind of elaborating on my player, uh, Dijon Jennings. I have the, uh, the privilege, if you will, to be able to coach him. He's an outstanding young man. Uh, he was definitely one of the captains of our team, and uh, rightly so. Uh, the biggest thing that Dijon brings to the table is he is a leader by example. Uh, because he leads himself very well, he, he, it allows him to be able to lead our team very well. And of course, at the quarterback position, that's extremely important. Uh, what I love about Dijon is that he is extremely coachable. He's very passionate. Uh, he, he's uh, very innovative. He likes to give a lot of insight, which helps us out big time. But at the same time, he's able to take correction. He's not too big headed that he can't uh, be corrected if, if he's wrong in any way. And I think that's an extremely valuable asset, especially for a captain, because that lets the rest of the team know how they should conduct themselves with the coaches as well. Uh, one of the biggest things that he does for us is he's a coach on the field. He knows the game in and out. Uh, his football IQ is through the roof, probably, probably the smartest football player I've ever coached, definitely the best quarterback I've ever coached, and uh, not the slightest cousin. I had the, the fortunate uh, privilege to coach his cousin Maurice Hale some years ago as well. Then Maurice was my guy for sure, but Dijon uh, is just a very, very special young man, a very special player. Uh, but like I said, his, his leadership, uh, the intangibles that he brings to our team are very much a benefit. And the biggest thing that he does is he sets the right example. So, thank you. Da, 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 da. And we're back, but standing. This time we're going to talk about Terrell Burton. Um, Terrell, one of our captains this year. Terrell's a tough kid, toughest kid on the team. You know, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later. You know, Terrell was the type of kid that showed up every day ready to work. He was the guy that came in, he was gonna do his job, he was gonna do it the way he told him, and he was gonna leave. It was that easy. You know, he, he, that's the type of football player he was. You know, he, he really worked hard um, for, for three years for us. Um, go, going into a sophomore year, I, I really liked Terrell. I could tell Terrell loved football more than most. I, I really wanted him to play a line for us. Um, I wanted him to get reps. You know, he was kind of getting in, but I knew he wanted to play defense. You know, he'd never tell you that because he, that was the type of kid he was. He just took the coaching and went with it. But you could tell he just wanted to play defense. He didn't really know, want nothing to do with offense, and that was all right. You know, so, but he was in the rotation on defense a little bit. Then the sophomore year, I'm pretty sure his year he hurt his ankle. Um, and that put him out a couple weeks, uh, and he, he lost all those reps. You know, when he came back, he wasn't in the rotation. But he was on the scout team, and he was still playing well. And he was going against the best that we had every day. Um, and Terrell played on Saturdays. But Terrell didn't just play on Saturdays. Terrell dominated on Saturdays. You know, he made it known that he should be playing on Fridays. You guys might have a bunch of guys. You guys might be really good. You, know, you have a lot of juniors and seniors. But I'm a sophomore that, that can help, and I'm here. You know, and um, that's one thing I really appreciate, appreciate about Terrell. I could see that nothing was going to stop him from getting what he wanted. Uh, going into his junior year, uh, kid, I wanted to play offense again, just like his sophomore year, because I wanted a guy like that on my front five. Um, but I knew he was going to probably start on defense. You know, it wasn't said, but I knew it, the way he was playing last year, how much bigger he got in the offseason, um, and how hard he worked in the weight room. Uh, then Coach Savon came in um, to work with him on, you know, on, on, work with us in the offensive line. And... You start there. And one thing I've seen about Terrell, Terrell had all the attributes that you want for a perfect offensive lineman. I mean, nice height, nice frame, weight, 
you know, big hands. One thing Terrell, he really has some big hands. Yeah, good and, punch. You know, great punch and a strong center base. And Terrell, working with him, and we were pass setting, and probably the worst kick step I ever seen. Top five, worst, top five. <laughs> like the ugliest thing. But one thing about Terrell, I noticed he had a hundred percent, hundred percent attitude and effort. And that's one thing you really need, especially in football and all throughout life. The two things that you can control is your attitude and effort. Yep. And that's one thing I know that Terrell will always bring to the table. And knowing him, he wanted to play deep tackle. I mean, he didn't want anything to do with the offensive line. Yep. But he didn't want to say it. And that's like, you know, that's, that's the type of kid he, he was. He just wouldn't say it. Yep. And I just noticed one thing. You see 66 stood out in defensive line in his junior year. And I mean, nasty guy up front, you know, taking names. I mean, he was just, he, he fit the defense well and played great. And he started against UA in exactly. week one, played well. Everybody, you know, you heard his name over there kind of the whole game. And then that last week, this junior, junior year, uh, the playoff game against Pick Central. Yep. And he stood out and he just kept on making plays and was holding down the D line. And it was great to see. And going into the senior year, uh, Didn't have a choice. Playing offense yeah. now, big guy. Yep. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't no running yep. away from it no more. One of the biggest guys, man. He had to start up front. And one thing about Terrell, too, and what he went on through all his senior year, he was going both ways. Yeah. I mean, the kid did not get out. And that's a tough thing to do. Like, I played both ways in high school. And when it comes around to week one, he uh, went to Gehanna game. He's going defense, going offense. And he's sitting there. And I'm looking at this kid tired. And I'm like, I'm starting to feel bad for him. I'm like, dude, like, you need a break. And he was like, no, no, I'm not getting out. I'm like, we like, did he just say no? He just though? said no. I <laughs> can't do that. Coming from a kid you know, from his junior year that really did not say anything. Like, I thought he was mute. Yeah. And his senior year, just getting comfortable and, you know, talking a lot more and being vocal. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to leave you in. I mean, do your thing. And, you know, you see him just keep on excelling and, Fitting in the offense line well and playing next to Dalton helped us out a lot. And, you know, he's playing guard. So, it, I mean, he, it wasn't one of those things that, like, you didn't have to coach him up on a lot of things. I mean, he did exactly what he was taught. We had two captains on that side of the offensive line, mm -hmm. you know, this year. You don't get that a lot. No. Where you have two, you know, you might have both your tackles, but having one side of your offensive line be captains, you know, two kids, you know, like Dalton, like we talked about earlier, and then. Terrell, like Terrell's that kid, he played guard, he was the inside, it was that tough pass pro. You know, his pass pro didn't have to be perfect. Um, he, you know, and he could work with those big guys in the middle. You know, later on in the season, it had to be perfect. He was playing tackle against some of the best ends he saw all year, that we saw all year. Exactly. You know, and he improved that much, just because just he worked all the time. Yep, and the biggest thing too, what I noticed, is like going back to the toughness part, Terrell was a blue collar guy. Like he packed his lunch to go to work. Don't doesn't take longer than a 15 minute break that's needed. And he will give you his sandwich that he brought. And going off of that, Terrell broke his thumb week two against Grove Court, third play. Comes up to me and is like, my thumb hurts. I think it's broke. You got x-ray vision? <laughs> exactly. Like, I oh, what do you mean? I'm like, can you play? Yeah. Well, go back oh, out there. See? Yes, sir. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> And later on, next week, this guy comes back in the cast. I'm like, so are you going to play? Yeah. All right, cool. Let's go. <laughs> so he goes out there, and like you said, like he had to transition and step up and be a tackle. And like I said, that is hard going from inside to going out, and he goes to the right side. With one hand. With one hand. One hand. One hand. This guy is the one hand bandit holding it down. Holding it down. <laughs> and he did great. Like, I – didn't get mad or anything like it wasn't an upsetting thing because one thing Terrell, like I said, he always had a great attitude and effort and gave it his all. Left toughest everything kid on the team. Toughest. Left I mean, everything toughest out. Team. Probably one of the toughest kids I ever met. Yeah. And it was a great, great time coaching him. I wish him the best of luck. Like yeah. we said before, let us know if you ever need anything. You ever need anything, you know, it means a lot, you know. When you have kids like Terrell uh, that you can tell people about, you know, I coached that kid. You know, I'm, I'm proud of him. I'm really, really proud of him, and I know he's going to do great things. 
And I told him that, you know, the, the, uh, during the Bradley game, after the game, you know, even if he doesn't play football, if something happens, I know he's going to do great because no one works harder. No one's more mentally tough. No one's more physically tough. You're going to go through things in life, through things in life, and that's the type of kid that you want on your team. That's the type of kid you want behind you because he's going to be there for you. He's going to work for you. And at the end of the day, he's going to do everything to make sure you win before he wins. And like you just you couldn't have a more selfless kid, and we, we're we're more than proud of him. Yes, um, like we, he said, anything you ever need from us, you had a sub recommendation, you know, a meal, anything, and we hope to see you around. And I know you'll be supporting little bro next year, and it's gonna be great. Yes, sir. So good luck to you, bro. You. Hi everybody, for the ones that don't know me, my name is Jay Ambergy. Currently I'm an offensive tackle for the Ohio University and I was part of the 2019 class along with being a team captain for the 2019 OCC championship team that beat both of the Pickerington teams. First and foremost, I'd like to congratulate the whole team on achieving what they did this past season. I know that you guys making it into the playoffs for the third year in a row definitely made RHS alum and the whole community proud. To the class of 2021, you guys achieved a whole lot from three straight playoff appearances, an OCC Ohio Championship, and being able to sign the Pick Central banner. Without you guys, the 2019 class and the 2020 class couldn't achieve the achievements that we did. Second of all, I'd like to congratulate and say thank you to Coach White and the rest of the coaching staff that has helped turn around the football program and put Reynoldsburg football on the map. Without you guys, many former players, including myself, would not be able to wear, be where they are today without all the hard work you guys have put in. With that being said, I'd like to give the class of 2021, 2022, and 2023 some motivation and tips to use along their football journey. First and foremost, you have to stay on top of your grades. Without grades, you won't be able to get recruited and you'll set yourself behind in life because you won't be able to graduate on time. Grades are important whether it is in high school or college. What Coach White preaches about grades is the same message my coaches give me at the Division I level in college football. Second of all, work as hard as you can and work to be the best you can be at your job no matter what it is. Don't be afraid to set high goals for yourself because the higher the goals you set, the more you'll achieve along the way. Third, teamwork is very important in anything you do in life. Create a brotherhood with your teammates because on or off the field, you have each other's backs. Football allows you to create lifelong friendships and that are probably one of the best you'll ever have. Finally, don't be afraid of failure. No matter how your football journey or life goes, you're going to face adversity. Football is a great teacher of that because when you get knocked down, you get right back up and play the next play. No matter what you run into, get back up and keep pushing forward. With all of that being said, I look forward to next season and want to see that state trophy in Reynoldsburg where it belongs. Thanks. Hi, my name is James Dean. I'm an alumni at Reynoldsburg High School, uh, class of 2020, and uh, I was asked to make a video for you guys for your banquet this year. There's some things I'm going to touch up on from your season to you seniors the underclassmen, um, y'all's grades, hard work, and just focus. Um, you guys made it to the second round of playoffs this year, which has only been done two times before in school history. I'm extremely proud of you guys, and you guys should be extremely proud of yourselves. Um, you seniors, this was your last ride, which means y'all have a decision to make. 
That decision is whether you want to continue your football career into college, your education, or you want to enter the workforce. But that decision is something you have to make for yourself, and it's what's right for you. Um, you seniors, you guys have been through it all, and you've done it together, and you guys have been an example for the underclassmen for this season. You underclassmen, pay attention to the seniors and the people that have come ahead of you. Um, you guys have came far this year being a part of a team that's been so young. You've been a key part to y'all success this year, which means y'all made it to the second round. Don't be satisfied by making it to the second round. Stay hungry and go even farther next year. Y'all time is coming too, but y'all have time to get better and improve. Um, something else I want to talk about is y'all's grades. Grades is make or break for college football. Um, you can be the best player you want, but if your grades are terrible, you're not going to be able to play. Uh, stay on top of your grades. Your grades are important. You're a student before you're an athlete. So you have to handle what in the classroom before you can handle what's on the field. Um, your hard work is going to carry you very far, whether it's in football, your life, um, the workforce, or just anything that you come across in life. Working hard is something that can carry you far. And it's a principle that you should want to have. Um, you also want to be focused. Don't let outside things influence on what you want to do and what's right for you. Uh, negative things aren't going to help for you. And doing negative things aren't going to help you do what you want to accomplish in life. Stay focused. Get what you need to be get done. And just be successful. You want to be successful. You don't want to be somebody that's not focused and just doing just what everybody else is doing and just being a part of the crowd. Stand out, be a leader, whether it's leading somebody or just being a leader for yourself. Um, I miss high school myself and um, I miss football, playing for Reynoldsburg. And I can tell you it's been a different journey coming to college and it's just been a whole different world. Um, enjoy this time you have left and go Raiders. Hi, my name is Desiree Elder, the treasurer of the Reynoldsburg Football Parent Association. Up next to recap the 2020 freshman football season and to present awards is the freshman head coach, BJ Queen. Hi, I'm BJ Queen, the head freshman football coach at Reynoldsburg High School. Uh, my assistant coaches are Daryl Elder, JJ Gorman, and Josh Healy. Okay. For our roster, read down through that. Uh, this year, we had nearly 40 players. We had uh, Saeed Ali, William Bastion, Wesley Beta, Laquan Brown, Timothy Burgess, Hollis Burton, Michael Casey, Vivek Champagne, Kai Crump, Romello Darling, Nathan Eckstein, Nazir Elder, Chase Feeney, okay, there we go, Joseph Yaboya. Caleb Gillespie, Tyler Hamachek, Logan Holland, Nick Johnson, Elijah Lambert, Montez Little, Robert Miller, Tion Mullins, Justin Murray, Evan Patton, Marcus Pollard, I'm sorry, Marcus Phillips, Marcus Phillips, Dorian Pollard, Xavier Price, Guyon Robinson, Mohamed Samor, Ferris Sadell, 
Carter Sigmund, Mackenzie Tillman, Cameron Turner, Malachi Vera, Maddox Walker, Cerise Weaver. Okay. I have special awards for the uh, freshman football team uh, to start off with. Uh, with all the things that we had to go through between COVID and the adversity we dealt with on the field and things like that, um, I said I really appreciated my captains. Uh, they stepped up and helped out throughout the year. My captains for this year were Maddox Walker, Justin Murray, and Guyon Robinson. They did a great job. For my other special awards, uh, most improved is Maddox Walker. My lineman of the year is Dorian Pollard. My offensive player of the year is Cerise Weaver. And my defensive player of the year is Laquan Brown. For my Golden Raider Award, that's the player that we believe exemplifies all the things that we want to see in a Raider football player. That is Nate Exby. Appreciate this season. Uh, love these guys to death. Uh, love to go to work with them. Um, it, was a, it was a pleasure. Um, I expect them to do great things in the future and can't wait to see them grow and help out the varsity program. All right, talking about the uh, 2020 uh, freshman football team for Reynoldsburg High School. Um, it was a good year. Uh, we didn't uh, do as well on the field as what we wanted to do. I know that was uh, disappointing for everyone at that point in time. But uh, valuable lessons learned. Uh, we uh, learned how to compete. It seemed like every game that uh, we did fall behind, uh, we had the ball at the end trying to, to win. And uh, the kids learned how to compete, how to learn to deal with adversity, uh, worked hard with that. And then the main objective was to get them prepared for varsity football. And uh, we did that. Uh, we had several kids go up in the last week for the last playoff game. Uh, and they contributed right away with practice and honestly could have sent a lot more kids up. Um, so, uh, you know, while the season was rough and you know, not what we, we wanted, you know, it did fit the overall goal, which is to get them ready to play varsity football so they're ready to go next year as sophomores. What's up, fellas? I'm Antonio Wilborn, member of the Reynoldsburg Parents Asso Football Parents Association and also husband to President Kelly Jackson Wilborn. As you know, we got, as you know guys, we're very proud of all your accomplishments this year. As a whole, your program has been very successful. But we know that you guys have accomplishments, goals to still accomplish, and that you want to take your team to the next level. <clears throat> but as a great man once said, Frederick Douglass, if there is no struggle, then there is no progress. So you guys have already went through the struggle. Now it's time to push through and tackle your goals and get the progress that you want. Now I'm going to introduce to you Coach Tory Parm, <clears throat> who's going to come on and reflect on your on you guys' accomplishments last season, and also he's going to announce all of your awards. That's it for me, guys. Let's go Raider Nation. How you doing? I'm Coach Parm. I'm here uh, to talk about the JV season. Uh, I am the JV head coach. I uh, have been for several years now. Um, we had a, a good JV season um, as far as our record. Um, if you look at it, most people would have thought that it, it wasn't a successful season. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, I just looked at how far the kids grew from the course of the start of the season. Um, and that's what's most important as far as the JV level is concerned. Um, our kids grew quite a bit, and I think they uh, got an understanding of high school football and um, really learned to come together and win. Um, we won our last football game, which is always fun uh, and, and important, I think, to go out on a, on a good note. 
and I thought that it was our, our best football game of the season. So uh, for that, I was happy, and I thought that the growth that they showed is something that we can build upon for our, our next season uh, that'll be coming, uh, and, and for those kids to become varsity football players. So uh, I was very happy, very proud to be the JV football coach. Uh, we were assisted by uh, Robbie Brickner, um, also uh, Carl Washington was the defensive coordinator, uh, and Brock Berry uh, did a good job with the offensive and defensive line on Saturday morning. Uh, so I'm very grateful to those guys for their help. Uh, and again, I thought it was a, a great football season, though our record didn't always reflect it. All right, so at this time, I want to introduce your JV football Raiders for 2020. Uh, first young man, Dion Jet Campbell. Terion Barber. Wesley Osai. Jalen Settles. Malik Gaines, Ashton Paul Rudd, Xavier Bates, Jordan Days, Stephen Schultz, Levi Cooper, Brandon Smith, Elijah Fountain, Jamar Jackson, Jay Sean Thomas, Jordan Watley, Josh Colbert, Christian Williams. Devon Hobringer, Keon Morrison, Asani Harris, Devlin Kibbe, Justin Harrison, Troy Kesterson, and finally, my man Sam Pet. Hi, I'm Stephanie Wood, Riddlesburg Football Parent Association board member. I am here this evening to reintroduce Coach White and Coach Luke for our Varsity 2020 Football Awards. All right, the following list of student athletes that we have are first year Varsity Award winners. We have Solomon Butchie Hill, Sofiana, Marquise Gillum, Omar Barr, Latrell Palmer, Troy Martin, Dudley, Jabon, Zion Jackson Wilbon, Joseph Spann, Deontay Head, Jeremiah Crawford Smith, Teron Spencer, Jabari Mitchell, Chris Carr, Shamar Ramirez, Kenneth Yates, Sean Payne, James Williams, Patrick O'Brien, Yusuf Samore, Caleb Turner, Sharbach. Bantor, Aaron Harding, Suleiman Saul, Donovan Reed, Alex Crump Whitson, Javion Edwards, and Landon Myers. We also have Marcel Burnett. And those are our first year varsity award winners. Following players that we have are second year varsity award winners. Enrique Love, 
Daniel Broomfield, Savion Torrance, Johannes, Jordan Haley, Alex Yule, Anthony Mobley, Jahan Martin, and Terrell Burton. Thank you very much. It is an honor and a pleasure to introduce uh, to some and present to others our uh, third year varsity letter winners, uh, Dejon Jennings, Justin Barco, Makai Woodfork, Dalton Hall, and Caleb Bernard. Uh, I'd like to congratulate those three-year letter winners. We had some guys that were, rep that were represented um, and uh, made the OCC team. Uh, it is a pleasure to announce those players. First team all OCC went to Dalton Hall, Marquise Gillum, Dejon Jennings, and Jabari Mitchell. Those are first team all OCC. Second team all OCC was Terrell Burton, Makai Woodfork, Daniel Broomfield, and Chris Carr. Our OCC special mention went to Caleb Turner. An honorable mention went to Aaron Harding. And our OCC Scholar Athlete Award winner was Justin Barco. Okay, so congratulations to those guys. Uh, sometime within the next week or two, they will be announcing the all-district team. Uh, and we'll make sure that we put something on the web website once that is, uh, uh, once that's been announced, uh, the all district team. We have individual award winners that I am, uh, uh, I'm very happy to uh, present to you. Uh, the John Thompson Leadership Award winner goes to Dudley Jaboin. Our most improved defensive player, Johannes. Our most improved offensive player, Justin Barco. Our Ironman Award. We had two Ironman Awards, uh, two, two uh, honorees this year for the Ironman Award. The first one was Terrell Burton. Uh, Terrell played both sides of the ball. He broke his thumb halfway through the season, never missed the game, was always out there practicing and gave it all he had. He still played both offense and defense. And the other one uh, is uh, Jabari Mitchell. He started on offense. He started on defense. We don't normally give out awards to sophomores, but uh, he did something very special for us this year, and I think it was right that we make sure we honor him. Okay? Our special team's most valuable player is Marquise Gillum. Our defensive most valuable player, a uh, young man that I'm truly going to miss, is Makai Woodfork. Our offensive most valuable player is Dejon Jennings. And the team most valuable player, I'm so proud to announce, um, the most valuable player, Dalton Hall. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank you all for uh, taking the time uh, to view our video production. Like I said, it's totally different than anything we've ever done before. And uh, you know, I must tell you guys that I truly miss you. You know, you go through the whole season, you know, hanging out with you guys all summer and all fall. And then once the season's over and they hand in the equipment, you know, it's, it just drops right off the table and it takes an adjustment, especially when you're used to being around some uh, people for so long and then all of a sudden it ends. I hope that you guys are being very diligent with your health. I hope you are taking care of your academics. I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our seniors uh, who will be moving on from our program. I want our seniors to realize that uh, just because uh, you're, you're, you're not playing football for Reynoldsburg anymore. You are still part of Raider Nation. You still represent us everywhere you go, whatever you do. We are always going to be here to support you. 
uh, you know, whether uh, working hard to try to get you into the college of your choice, uh, to if guys just want to get a job, uh, one school is out. I can't tell you how many letters of recommendation I've written for our players uh, to help them to get jobs. Uh, so whatever you want to do, we want to let you know that we are here to support you. And uh, that will never change under my watch. Uh, you young guys that are coming back next year, I hope that you are as serious and as fired up for next season as I am. Because we have a great opportunity next year. We've never had the number of returning people, uh, returning starters coming back than we had this year. We had some seniors uh, that decided not to play this year, some other players that decided not to play for us this year. Guess what they did? They gave you opportunities. Some of you guys got opportunities to play varsity football, and you guys have definitely taken care of it. Uh, next, next season, like I said, we got a major challenge on our hands. But you know what? You're all competitors. We coaches are competitors. Bring them on. We'll take on anybody that we need to take on because I truly believe that we are going to have a great offseason and uh, hopefully that we don't have interruptions due to the COVID pandemic. Keep in mind, it's still out there. Numbers are exploding, you know, here in Central Ohio and in the state of Ohio as a whole. Please, please, men, be careful, be diligent, wear your mask at all times. Please do. Anytime that you leave your house and you're going to be around people, make sure that you have your mask on. It has been proven that it helps to keep you from spreading it and it helps to keep you from getting it, okay? And so please do that. And, you know, because once we start working out and hanging around with you guys, I don't want to get it either. So I'm going to have my mask on at all times. Uh, and if I need to be the uh, uh, show leadership in that area, I definitely will because we need to have a great off season and hopefully we can get through without interruption. I already noticed some of you guys are already working out. That is so good. Get big, get strong. We'll worry about speed and agility. We'll worry about that later. But we, if we're going to take on uh, that team that's down at the other end of 256, who I truly believe will probably win the state championship tomorrow night, uh, then we better be ready because they're not going anywhere. They're going to be big, they're going to be strong, and they're going to be very athletic. We can do that too, and we are not going to back down from them. If we're going to win the regional championship, we got to go through them. My thought, bring them on. We'll take them on, and we're going to give them our best shot. Okay? But other than that, I want you guys to please stay safe. And uh, as I always say, I don't want to read about you. Okay? So you guys take care of your business. There will be more information coming out soon regarding uh, the beginning of our off-season program. Uh, count, like I said, we're going to be starting. We're going to be working out in the mornings, 6 a.m., no excuses. And for those that are not independently mobile and cannot be here at 6 o'clock in the morning, we will have another group that will go after school, okay? But we will not mix the groups. If the morning group is the morning group, then if you miss in the morning, don't come in the afternoon. But a lot of the things that we're doing is to try to protect us from this COVID virus. And if we got guys jumping around, coming in the morning, guys coming in the afternoon, then you're more apt to bring it uh, to one of the groups. So if we have an issue with the afternoon group, it will not affect the morning group. If we have an issue with the morning group, it will not affect the afternoon group, okay? We'll be talking more. We'll set up a Zoom meeting uh, with, uh, with our players for next year and lay everything out. And uh, if you guys want to do something special, then be ready to do something different. If we keep doing things the way that we've been doing, then we're going to have the same results that we've been getting. It's time for us to change. It's time for us to take advantage of an opportunity that we're going to have this year. So I pray for you. I love you guys. And uh, I can't wait to get back with you guys again. You guys take care. Uh, I don't know.
the problem, bud. What's up, fellas? I'm Antonio Wilborn, member of the Reynoldsburg Parent Football Association, and also husband of Zion. <laughs> he started laughing. First off, I would like to thank my friends and my family in the class of 2021 for allowing me to experience the best four years of high school. I just want to say thanks. What's up, fellas? I'm Antonio Wilborn. They didn't come on. There's no flash. I didn't see no light. Hey, mom and dad, I'm thankful for everything you guys do for me. Coaches, I'm thankful for everything you guys do for me. It's been awesome being a part of this program the last four years. And to my players, uh, ah, God, we do, we do. <laughs> you do, do. I was about to say. Uh, 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 bad key. <laughs> no, I'm, I just took a picture. Huh? All right, hold up, let me think. First off, I would like to give thanks to God, my family and friends. Second off, I would like to give a thanks to my teammates, my coaches, and the um, association of football from Renov Ah, uh, Yeah, I did restart. Uh, man. First off, I would like to give a thanks to God, my family, coaches, and friends. And I would like to thank my teammates and coaches for the um, free. I keep messing up. 2021, we here. I like first of all. <laughs> Sorry. Bro, no, shut up. Oh, man. Hey, no. No. oh, my phone went dark. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Bro. All right, you ready?